basic aviation designs and our series of videos showing us flying our prototype CA-18 Adventurer around New Zealand. Our version of the quintessential pipe cup is full scale and constructed of timber as you can see here. The flight characteristics of our CA-18 are like any other cub, and the same rules apply when handling the aircraft either on the ground or in the air. Today's flying was quite challenging. The wind may not have been very strong, it was averaging between 14 and 16 knots, but due to the direction of 310 and swinging to 340 degrees means it flows over a lot of buildings and when it flows over these buildings it creates a lot of mechanical turbulence so you can have a lot of updrafts and downdrafts at various places along the runway. I love flying around Tauranga. The scenery is quite spectacular and when we fly around in the evenings when the sun is setting and the sky is red and it's just coming to dusk with the lights of the houses below you and coming into the aerodrome, it is quite picturesque. landing as we're going to be attempting here, we would approach at 50 knots and as we get closer to the aerodrome just before we get to the threshold we would reduce that to 45 and hold a little bit of power on, somewhere around about 1500 rpm if we can. Then we would hold it off the runway at about one or two feet and just let it sink down onto the runway. Once on the runway we would just pull forward and reduce power and once the tail loses its flight characteristics we would slowly reduce the stick back to full aft and then by brakes. As I said before today is quite turbulent so being able to just hold a steady flight path all the way down was not an option and you just had to fly the aircraft keeping that nose pointing down the end of the runway with the rudder and using your ailerons to keep you over that centre line as much as you can. recap on what happened here. Just as I was about to level off and hold it off the ground I had a sink and then as soon as I hit the ground I had a bounce and then an updraft. The updraft took me up about five or six feet and I knew with uh, very little airspeed 
and I had indicated that if I had decided to continue on with this landing I would start porpoising and bouncing down the runway and with the gusts and with the crosswind it could have turned quite ugly if I couldn't have kept the wings into the wind so there's no shame in going around as I say and I still stand by my decision that I just applied full power and took off again. If you look just over the nose you'll see the wind sock just around that circle that's been mowed and you can see there's a nice crosswind, not particularly strong but still something to um, be mindful of so I stay to the right of these crosses which is the centre line in case I get blown to the side of the runway. Just as I flew past the tower, I flew through its mechanical turbulence. Did you notice the wings rocking a little bit? gauge on the left hand side you'll notice I'm carrying about 1500 rpm trying to carry some energy down to the landing until I touch down onto the ground. Whether you fly a tail dragger or a conventional geared aircraft without flaps and find yourself too high or too fast when you arrive on finals, you can always set your aircraft up into a forward slip to reduce both height or speed. The forward slip is a great tool to have in your pilot's toolbox. If you are flying in a left hand pattern as I am here, maintain left bank with the ailerons and at the same time feed in right rudder. The board slip also requires you to pitch forward, but keep an eye on speed. Do not allow yourself to get too slow or likewise too fast. The other point to remember is the engine must be at full idle. It is pointless slipping with power on if you are trying to lose height or reduce your speed. 
Today, due to the turbulence over the golf course, I am keeping my extra speed in case of any sink. Once clear of the golf course and lined up with the runway, I will enter into a side slip. As the wind is coming from our right quarter, to enter into the side slip today, I'll have to lower my right hand wing and into the wind and use left rudder to keep the nose parallel with the runway centre line. Once established into the side slip, I will use pitch to control airspeed and power to control rate of descent. In this landing you can see I'm holding the stick to the right to keep the right wing into wind. I'm also poling forward to keep the tail up. Once airborne again, I apply the wing's level technique and weathercock the aircraft into the wind. this call to inform us the wind is now at 340 degrees which is just about direct right angles to the runway and about 14 to 15 knots with gusting to 18. So it's time to put the aircraft away for the day. I've had a good flight. I've challenged myself a few places along the way and it's all in one piece so it's time to call it the day. They say you haven't truly experienced a good takeoff and landing until you've actually flown in a tail dragger aircraft. I agree with this statement and I encourage every pilot to have a go with an instructor in a tail wheel aircraft. It teaches you good rudder and aircraft handling skills that will stay with you for your life. Thank you for watching. This is not intended to be a training video, it is just my experiences of flying our replica Piper Cup.